Hello everyone, welcome to part 3, which I know that you've been hotly anticipating, but I've been working. I have been working, I have other things to do, can't do everything. But, first I will tell you, spin in circles, first I will tell you that I'm going to briefly do a little bitty part through here, and then right after that I'm going to do a little bit of farming as I promised. You'll see that my soul count has gone, why am I looking this way, like I'm actually pointing at the camera, that has gone up a little bit, that's because I did a few runs, because I haven't played in quite a while, so I was a little bit rusty. Come here, you. Give you sweet kisses. You like these kisses? I know you do, you little slut. So, there's a few things that I would like to talk about, and in the meantime... One that I actually forgot about. I should have done that before I even left. Oh, well. Okay. You guys aren't gonna attack me, are you? Nah, nah, you're not. You're not gonna attack me. You're nice guys. You're nice guys. Okay, uh, let's see. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? I picked up something that I wanted to show off. Rubbish. Haha. <laughs> Rubbish with no value. Who in their right mind would bother carrying this around? Perhaps you need help. That's one thing. The other thing is copper coin. Remember we got this from Petrus. Coin made of copper. Its face shows old man Gloyth. God of medicine and, and drink. You don't hear too much about this particular god. You hear, you know, all the other Gwen and blah blah blah. Old man Gloyth, not so much. Even coins of great value in the world of men have little value in Lordran, where the accepted currency is souls. Those who dream of returning to the outside world are fond of carrying these around. This is probably the only hint of exactly what it is that Petrus wants. He seems to have aspirations of returning to the outside world, and this can only be gleaned through this one little item description. That's it. Oh, and, uh, uh, okay, I'll, I'll do one last one this thing. Keys. Uh, just briefly, here's the line dead. Most doors are better left unopened. How clever. A mysterious knight without saying a word shoved a corpse down into the cell. And on his person was his key, right inside of its butthole. Who was this knight and what was his purpose? There may be no answers, but one must still forge ahead. There's something I wanted to point out with these item descriptions, is that they're not phrased in the context of the you, the character. The character is not actually writing them. Key to the iron bars, blah, 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 blah. The Undead Asylum is a giant undead prison, segmented by countless iron bars. Even if an undead were to escape from a cell, patches to the outside world would not be gained easily. And probably this, is, this highlights this the most. But this chosen undead knows not what the pilgrimage has in store. These seem to be written by someone else. In other words, it's written from the context that this is in third person. The character that you're playing at is, is not the one that is actually sort of narrating the descriptions to himself. Die, you. The reason why I'm half naked, by the way... Yes, this, this is the excuse I'm going to use. The reason why I'm naked, half, uh, by the way, is because... Someone mentioned in the comments, and I don't know if this is true or not, but it kind of seems like it would be, knowing this game, that if you have your game set to run at 60 frames per second, you actually jump at a... you jump with less distance than you would uh, if you were running at 30 frames per second. And by the way, I will also point out, someone wanted me to mention that he's actually petting his bucket that's normally sitting there, which I may, I may have destroyed it, you know, I'm not saying it was me, but it was me. But it, it, someone's, some people say that it's something that's inside of the bucket. It could be the bucket itself. Eh, it could be whatever your heart's desire. It could be a big bucket full of wieners. You know, who can say, really? If you want it to be wieners, why not? It could just be a big bucket full of, uh, this duck vaginas. I, I, don't, I, I don't know. What, what do you people want from me? Let's see, what else do I need to mention? I need to mention that I'm, I was going to grind for the sake of getting a bow and getting some arrows and maybe a buckler in the meantime. By the way, that wooden shield that we picked up before, it just says, wood sucks. Wood sucks. That's what it says. Okay, let's see if I can make this jump. I'm slightly naked, so I should jump much better. Eh, not so much. I did get six health off you, though. Oh, for God's sake. Maybe I can run away. Run away, run away. Don't have time for you guys. Oh, I really wanted to show me plucking that crossbow out of the, that guy's butt. But I guess that's for another day. It will never be. I actually made that jump off camera. Maybe I should have recorded that. Oh, well. But on to better things. These guys, these guys don't like you. They don't like you one bit. They're going to be throwing firebombs. Oh, there's a couple of things I actually wanted to point out. Duh, 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 duh. No, play, go on. No. No. First, you can see Firelink down there. See it? Isn't that nice? You can also see some terrible rendering down there. Isn't that nice? No? You don't like that? Well, fuck you. It's part of the game, too. Uh, one thing I actually wanted... I thought that was kind of interesting whenever I was roaming through this area 
which is probably completely unintentional, is that the ramparts, the little divided areas where you shoot, air, uh, you know, archers would shoot arrows from, is they're actually on the inside of the walls pointed towards the city, which is a little bit strange. They're pointed down towards the city populace, which is probably nothing consequential. They probably weren't even thinking of it. This is the lower burg, by the way, that we're going to be going to later on. If you don't know that, you can look down here already. Fucking dogs are down there. Is, uh... And of course, Lordron is beyond that. So yeah, I sort of get the impression that... What else was I going to do? Buckler. Okay, yeah, that's it. Uh, I, I get the sort of the impression that the people that lived within Lordron were in service to the gods. And it's kind of unusual that the ramparts were focused in, which seems to imply that maybe... Damn it. God damn it, Bobby. Seems to imply that maybe there was some dissension amongst the people about... No backstab? No backstab. About uh, the, you know, building. Maybe in people that people were enslaved or something. I have no idea. Oh, that's what I was going to do. I was going to stand over there and look over here because you can see that the inside of the door that you go through to get down into the berg down there is not rendered correctly, but that's it. This door we can't open just yet. Opens much later. It's a pretty door, though. Look at those leaves. It's pretty. Okay. Uh, let's see. I already mentioned that I wanted to get some arrows and a buckler. Hello, friend. Look at his nice little little wares that he has over here. Lots of pots and pans and open books and whatnot. Hey! You destroyed your own goods and services. That wasn't very nice to yourself. No. No. Stop. Stop blocking. Stop trying to protect yourself. I don't like that at all. This guy is a trickster. He, he, you come through here, oh, I'm going to see a pretty view. And then he stabs you right in the side. Not very nice at all. But that's the, this is the passageway that's going to lead up to that. But we're not there yet. We're not there yet. I'm going to destroy this other table. Fucking tables. He already destroyed it. He already destroyed it once. Why are you mad at me? Black firebomb. These are the things that we were going to be using to destroy that demon earlier on in the game. There's nothing really important in here. These are just sort of generic assets, but it does give you the distinct impression that these, you know, of course, are, are living quarters. Notice that nothing has really been touched, though. Everything is more or less in perfect order. Plates are set and whatnot. They pro this is, again, probably something that they just did, that they didn't really think too much about. But it does sort of imply that the hollowing process may have been quite sudden. That maybe it was something that was, you know, late, it was late at night... Everyone was setting up for a nice dinner, and then BAM! Hollowfication. Which is not true at all, but it's something that you can glean from... Oh, it's you that's going to be throwing the firebombs. This is quite dangerous, by the way. Ooh, that's not nice. I better heal, just in case. These guys can be a problem. And I see you throwing a firebomb up there. Oh, that's neat. It blew up the thing in here. Okay. No! You are a... Naughty Hollow. They always fall in a very sexy way, don't you think? No? No, you don't think that? Well, I do. I think a lot of things. One thing I will point out as I go through this area, killing all these... 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 Just lovely gentlemen. Come over here, guys. I know that you want to throw a uh, firebomb up here. Just stroll up there like badasses. Yoink! Can't see, but I'll attack anyways. Gotta be careful about my stamina, though. Oh, there it goes. Normally those guys would... Ah, oh, I hate this spot. Eh. Eh. Okay, there we go. Uh, what was I saying? Oh, I, I was going to say that while we're going through here, you may notice that ever so often... You may not even see it, I don't know. That I will get, instead of the white soul that comes out from their bodies, it will instead be black. And that will go up to the top counter. Right now, it has the number two. It will change to a number three if it happens, if you see it. There's nothing up here I just wanted to show you. Ah, yes. More lovely, lovely plants. And this blank texture. Oh, oh yeah, that, look, that looks amazing. I love you, FromSoft. There's nothing... It's fun to go around just looking at tiny little things like this. What the hell is that? Is that supposed to be a balcony? Was it, was it balconifying? There's no window there. For God's sake. This one minor detail from Soft. 
do I expect too much that in this rush video game full of all these other flaws that I can't point out this one minor inconsistency? Ah, oh, well. Maybe I'm just a dick face. Maybe that's the problem. But, uh, anyways, the black humanity, the, the little black soul that comes out, this soft humanity, uh, you can have 99 of those at one time. And the more soft humanity, I don't really like this system, but the, the more soft humanity that you have, as we get gold pine resin, which we might be using later on, hint, hint, actually increases your stats. And uh, some other things like weapon upgrades also scale with this soft humanity system upwards of, I think, a maximum of 10. So the sort of the bare minimum that you want to have is 10 if you're skilled. If you don't really know what you're doing in this game yet, then odds are you're not going to be having too much luck keeping soft humanity around. Come over. Oh, see? There it goes. Number three. Come over here, darling. Give you a kiss, too. Mmm, mmm. I love those kisses. Uh, what else do I need to mention? Oh, uh, I was going to mention that the Berg itself is a hotspot for invasions. Jesus! Oh, right, right. Uh... That is someone kindling his bonfire in the same area that you're in. Anytime that you see that. Okay, just explain that. And uh, I was going to mention that the Berg is a hotspot for, in for invasions and PvP primarily. Uh, late game and sort of early game, people will go over to that little area. Point forward. Go over to that area that we were in just before that I failed miserably so many times in. And they will fight one another and stab each other. And fuck each other. Right inside their various holes. You know, just people do all sorts of things there. Don't worry about it. And why it is a hot spot primarily because uh, it's pretty easy to get to. Uh, and that's, that's the same place that you can see the Firelink Shrine from. Hello, buddy. Let's run right down. That's actually pretty cool. D Ow! Bitch! I can't believe I actually did that. This is one of the little weird things about... Well, sort of one of the quirks of Dark Souls 1's controls whenever you're going back from Dark Souls 2. Is that, uh... Did it retain it? Huh, I thought it would have gone up to 11 since that happened. Oh, uh, whenever you, he kindles it, it's supposed to, uh... Is that how it used to work? I don't know, I can't even remember now. Anyways, you're supposed to get one more extra. Let, let's go ahead and just hurry through this. See, things like that. That's another one of the little, the little quirks of this game. I tried to target the guy since I had it locked off. But it went to the guy that was behind me. Make sure I'm careful. I don't want to lose too many souls early. Grab that. Hello. These waist cloths are actually really nice as far as uh, generating or getting a lot of poise out of uh, weight limits. I think the soldier's waist cloth, not the warrior's, but the soldier's is actually what people use whenever they're min-maxing their poise for a specific level limits. And you have to kill these guys all over again. Uh, because if you don't, they'll, they'll just come up behind you and give you a bad day. And of course, if you two-hand, that'll increase your damage. And also, it halves the amount of strength that you need to wield certain weapons. Two-handing, however, does not decrease the amount of dexterity that you need. I'm trying to lure them, these guys away. Funnel them together. Primarily to, uh... Keep that guy from throwing firebombs at me. Damn it! I'm going to... Whenever you don't have a uh, thrusting weapon in this sort of tight corridor thing, the best thing to do is, is just to use a jumping attack. I'm not going to go back for those guys over there. And you have to clear this guy out or he'll shoot arrows right into your butt, your scrotum, or, you know, whatever he can find. Just whatever, really. He's not choosy. Uh, let's see. No, that, that's all my notes. Okay, don't have to worry about my note thing anymore. Let's just focus on getting my shit back. And I'll aggro multiples at the same time because I make bad life decisions. But I'm good enough to overcome them. And one less guy... I wanted to focus on just getting through this one little area up to this point, because this is the route that I'm going to be using. What I've just done, I have cleared out, and he's not going to push that thing down a second time. 
But this is my route, just going up to here and then going back. This is the route that I like to use whenever I'm farming this area. And again, I love doing this because this is my favorite little sort of route in the, the whole game. Uh, da -da 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 -da. But, oh, uh, the reason why that I died to that guy is because I was trying to quickly turn around and then turn back. But Dark Souls 1 is a little bit less responsive, so ever so often you'll find that you it doesn't quite pick up on the uh, the input just right. So you'll end up kind of attacking this way, even if he's behind you. One of those little weird things that's really hard to describe correctly. But let's go down here and visit our friend. Our friend Sauron. Who I am going to die to. I, I can tell you that right now. Because, again, it's been quite a while since I've played this game. And I'm very out of practice. And, do, actually, do I have... It would be better to use something that has a high critical rate. Whenever we're doing this. I don't have a dagger right now. So I guess the best thing to do is just to stick with the battle axe. It's probably the best thing to do. But I just want to show you this little area that no one ever goes to. There's nothing here. It's just bullshit. It's kind of... It, I wonder what's over there. Oh, nothing. You can always tell. Anytime that you see that dark, nebulous, crotchal region over there, it just means that sort of blackness. It, there's nothing there. That's what that is. Unfinished bricks. That's weird. Like they were still in the process of building something. Or that bricks were falling down and they had started collecting them. Isn't it weird that I'm looking at something so insignificant when I should be fighting this giant monstrosity? Wouldn't it be far more hilarious if I just died to this thing instead of actually taking the time to appreciate the art? No. No, it wouldn't. Okay. But I'm going to try to bait this guy out because I'm, I am want to die someplace that's not right here. You can backstab this guy, but I can never quite get it. Oh, I got it. But you notice, it didn't do fucking shit to him. Run away, run away. And he is going to be very upset. He, he's not happy about that one bit. Okay, so the... You're probably not going to damage out damage this guy... The easiest way to deal with him is to lure him out into an area like this. Right here, which you should have cleared out already. And to either go for backstabs or go for parries. And if you know his moveset, like that's what you want to parry. That sort of overhead strike, backstab. You don't want to try to parry his thrust. And I forgot that he, the... Try, no? I can't quite get the alignment correctly. And he does have poise, so you can break his... There we go. Okay. So you can break his poise. And you'll... I'm trying to illustrate a problem with Dark Souls 1's combat. Very much focused on blocking and just rotating to one side and trying to go for backstabs. Over and over again. Not the best system. Well, And that's kind of the, the thing that's supposed to get you in trouble. Is, uh... Damn it. My spacing wasn't quite right. He's pretty good at that, though. He is uh, scripted to uh, go for that counterattack whenever you start trying to chug. And the actually just taking damage even once like that can be a really big problem. Still can't quite get that. Because it creates this chain of events in which you're constantly trying to regain health. And that's one of the one of the uh, little sources of difficulty in this game. Okay, there's a couple of back steps. Let's see if I can get a parry and show that off. Oh, how's it feel, Mr. Black Knight? Oh, it doesn't look like it feels good at all. Oh, Mr. Black Knight. Try not to waste too much stamina. If you can... Is he going to drop it? Ah, uh, he only dropped the shield. Oh, well. You can either get the... Uh, you can get the Black Knight shield, and you can get the Black Knight sword from him. I really wanted the sword. Oh, well. But the shield is also nice, I guess. Uh, let's show that off, if I can find it. Black Knight shield. Shield of the Black Knights that wander Lordrum. A flowing canal is chiseled deeply into its face. Long ago, the Black Knights faced the Chaos Demons and were charred black. But their shields became highly resistant to fire. Now, uh, I guess I should actually equip it so that you can see it. This is one of... <laughs> it's, it's so heavy, apparently, that I can't actually use it. The, the Black Knights are, of course, the Knights of Gwen. They are... And you... Those... <laughs> you can't quite lift it. Uh, the, the Black Knights are the Knights of Gwen. Uh, 
there's some conflicting information about this. Either the Knights of Gwyn were charred black by going to... Where do you think I'm going to go? Where's he going to go? He's going to go here! Yes, he's going to go here. He's going to go here. Were charred black either by uh, trying to fight the demons and failing, or they were charred black by uh, Gwen lighting or rekindling the uh, first flame. And actually, both of those are sort of true. The distinction is that their armor was charred black when fighting the demons, but their actual bodies were incinerated, the ones that you find in the, the kiln anyways, by the first flame. And that is the distinction. That whenever people say either one, that's what they're referring to. That's the door we want, or we could want anyways. And this is the friend that we're about to make. And I'm not going to try to parry with this. That's for damn sure. What's good for this? I forget exactly. I'm not going to be blocking anything. That's for damn sure. Uh, but I actually, let me check something. Backstep so I don't circle into his aggro range. Okay, that looks like that. I'm testing the, the parry window on each one of these. And s I don't think I have any of them that are in this range. That actually looks like a, a light. This might be a light shield. I can't quite remember. But we'll try this out. Okay, but this... I will most certainly die to Havel. This is Havel, by the way. If you play Dark Souls 2, you know, you're going to be used to seeing this fucking armor. And he is not too happy to see me. And I am not too happy to see him. I've never actually really cared too much for this armor. You notice he has an exceptionally large amount of health. And his AI kind of dis... You know, kind of fucks up every so often, which allows you to get behind him. The weapon that he is carrying is... See, he, this is the, the gist of uh, how shields work in this game. I still took... Ooh, no... <laughs> I still took quite a bit of damage. I'm avoiding that because he's two-handing it. And I'm not quite used to the uh, animations anymore, so I'm trying to be absolutely careful. But if I die here, I don't really mind too much. But once I do die, assuming I do, then I will cut back once I am done farming. Usually how this goes is that I get about eight or nine of these in before I make a single mistake, at which point I just die terribly. Come on, Havel. Give it to me. Give it to me, baby. Pound me. Unfortunately, the parry windows in this game in Dark Souls 1 are much easier to work with than they are in 2. And 2, the window is much tighter as far as the uh, animation frames that you get. Come on, Havel. What are you doing, sweetie? What are you doing, sweetie pie? You can't do that around me. I'll go for the backside every time. Oh, yeah. But I think in Dark Souls 1, the parry window on the small shields is something like 22 frames. And in uh, Dark Souls 2, it's some... Oh, no. Don't, you don't want that. You don't want the back step. I can't remember if you actually can dodge that or not. But I definitely don't want to test it. Damn, he's doing it in succession, too. Well, we can't have that. You notice how much, how long this takes, though. This is one of the reasons why I don't really like doing this this early. Usually what I do is I go through and uh, farm a bit. Not because, obviously, I can't do this. But because I just don't like having these prolonged fights. Because, again, what happens is I do this several times and then I mess up once... And believe me, just messing up one time is all that Havel needs. Oh, he's doing it again. What's he doing? Praying? Come on, Havel. I thought you were agnostic. Actually, Havel uh, was a... Uh, oh, no, again. Havel was one of the uh, servants of Lord Gwyn. We'll get more information on... God damn it. We'll get more information on his backstory much later on. But obviously his design was uh, infamous enough am amongst players that the developers of Dark Souls 2 felt obliged to include him inside of their game. So much so, in fact, that apparently they decided his armor should be superior to everyone else's, I guess. 
Oof, that was close. I actually felt the, uh, <laughs> the frames on that one. Make sure... Ah. Okay, that should, in theory, not quite... And don't get too greedy. I actually should be two-handing. Just barely... Ooh! Not quite. Okay, there we go. Now that's a fucking fight! Don't you think so? If you don't know his animations, it's obvious how difficult that this is supposed to be. He, you're not supposed to get past him. You're not supposed to kill him this early, as far as uh, their development goes. But of course, if you're good like me, mm, I'm masturbating right now. If you can't hear it, that's that's my desk. This is terrible. Fucking, because what the hell am I doing? Then uh, you'll be able to get this early, and you'll also get access to that door. You can just run past him, but you know. Okay. This ring was named after Havel the Rock, Lord Gwyn's old battlefield compatriot. Havel's men wore the ring to express faith in their leader and to carry a heavier load. What is unusual is that obviously he has gone hollow. Uh, actually, let's save the uh, lore explanations about Havel for a little bit. Let's cut it here and I will be back in a moment. You know, because this is a, a good crossroads, and there's a couple of things that I want to get done. See you in a bit. Boink. Hey, look. More bricks. Let's take about 30 minutes to speculate further. Nah, I'm, I'm, I'm just kidding. I'm not going to do that. Uh, by the way, I'm not really that serious about the whole ramparts and the enslaved human bit. Yeah, I, I was just kind of saying, you can kind of make up anything that you want about this setting based on Flimsy little details like that. By the way, you notice that it's daylight here? If we were to go through that door that I had just unlocked, then it would be nighttime. And people like to complain about that. Oh, that's what they say. That's what they say. But that's just because they were trying to give the illusion of a day night system without the ability to actually have a day night system. And you will notice that in Bloodborne, there actually is now a day night system. So, there you go. Now you have an explanation. Jackasses. All the same. Uh, let's see. Oh, shit, I forgot. There is one thing that I wanted to do, and I avoided it just because I wanted to make absolutely certain that I picked it up, which is a bit of an irony. I did my farming off screen. This is actually like two or three days later after I filmed the little first part. So, I'm forgetting a, a few things. But all the same, this will be one part, so fuck me. But I forgot to pick up the blue tear stone ring over here. I'll go ahead and tell you that the blue tear stone ring is pretty much worthless in every single respect. Blue tear stone ring, let's take a look at the thing that we will never ever use. Okay. Blue tear stone ring, the rare gem called tear stone, has the uncanny ability to sense imminent death. This blue tear stone from Katarina boosts the defense of the wearer when in danger. Now, the reason why that is considered to be useless is because the actual effect does not trigger until you are near death. It boosts your physical, I think physical defense, quite a bit, but, as you might imagine, since your health is already so low, odds are anything in the game that hits you at that point is going to... Should I go down this way? Yeah, I'll show off the door. That anything that hits you at that point is going to kill you either way. Uh, let's see, as I'm going down here, I'll mention Havel. Havel, the jovial fellow that I just killed three days ago that I can barely remember, was in fact a god. He was one of the gods. I've already opened this door, by the way. I took a peek outside. By the way, the night system that I was talking about, notice, completely changed. The atmosphere has completely changed, but this is Darkroot Basin. Uh, I'll come back here in a second. I just wanted to show you this. And to bring out Havel's ring for a moment and talk about it. This ring was named after Havel the Rock, Lord Gwyn's old battlefield compatriot. He is not one of the four knights. He's simply one of Lord Gwyn's old friends. Havel's men wore the ring to express faith in their leader and to carry a heavier load. So though subservient to Havel, who apparently was some sort of leader... In much the same way that Gwyn was a leader, and the four knights were his 
kind of people. Um, by the way, that also implies that there are multiples of the ring. So if you... I guess that's the, the reasoning for Dark Souls 2. The reason why it's in that game. Um, but Havel was a god. Uh, the, of course, the gods were those that have the soul of light. Uh, is it, I don't. I think it's the one above, actually. Yeah, this had to make sure. I had to make sure. After that damn lizard, I know good and well that it's. I'm gonna two hand just in case. I know you're in there, you little bastard. I think he's actually physically inside. I don't, I can't quite remember. Actually, yeah, shit. I forgot about that. I forgot to put my headphones on. Which means that audio is going to be bleeding through this fucking thing. God fucking damn it. Professionalism. 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 Okay. Maybe I'll just cut that out. Maybe that's what I'll do. Or maybe I'll leave it in for my own amusement. What will not be for my own amusement is this goddamn lizard. Come on down here, buddy. I really fucking hate these things. I guess it's implied that once you kill them, then you're kind of just plucking the things out of their dead body, just tearing it out and eating it, or shoving it in your pants, whatever you're doing exactly. I have to make absolutely sure that I kill that fucking thing. I hate these goddamn things, as it jiggles sexually on the ground. Oh, and every single... I've never played demons, but they look remarkably irritating in demons as well. Uh, but yes, nothing's up here, by the way. Havel was a god, and what was I going to say about him? He hated Seath. Good man, good man. I assume that he hates the dragons because he never actually gave up the old prejudices. And uh, it's not really explained exactly why he's hollow in the first place. One can only assume. It, 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 the easiest explanation would be that he went hollow after Gwyn was lost to him, lo lost to their society. But it's sort of implied that he was actually imprisoned before Gwyn even left. So how he lost his motivation, who knows. My personal theory is that Miyazaki and the gang put an NPC down there with that armor and then retroactively decided, let's make up some reasoning for why he's down there. Uh, let's give him some backstory, and that's just the backstory that he got. Okay, I'll go ahead and tell you that in the, pro in the process of farming, I did level up quite a bit, as you might have noticed by now. Which means, we're going to have some fun. Now, did pressing? Oh, it, it does slide down. I couldn't re quite remember what <laughs> what Dark Souls 2 actually did. Actually, let's go ahead and set this, because you know good and well what I'm going to be doing here. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Get that ready. And oh, someone actually died. I don't think many people will be playing this time of night. Okay, here's our buddy, the Taurus Demon, and he is going to have himself a bad time. Or so I hope. I know good and well that this is not going to go the way that I hope. Just have to gird my loins first. If you if you have loins, kids, be sure to gird them. It's very important. Whoops. That wasn't right at all. Let's try that again. Sir, sir, I'm going I'm going to ask you to wait right there. I am calling a mulligan. I will be right back. You're supposed to do I was trying to do a jumping uh, R2, but again the 60 frames a second thing kind of Ugh. There we go. Okay. Now that wasn't quite as much as I had hoped. Oh well. I was hoping that would kill him, but apparently not. In one or two other playthroughs, I've gotten the Black Knight sword early and then farmed up my strength in one shot. As I accidentally illustrate why it is exactly I don't care for big dumb slow weapons. A little bit too straightforward, a little bit too simple minded of a weapon for me. Yeah, that, that's the excuse I'm going to use. I'm just too smart. Did you know that Taurus demons flagellate very loudly when they die? Yeah, yeah, that's their lore. Alright, the bravest of victories, and the most classy of victories. That didn't quite go the way that I had hoped in my head. Yeah, not so much. But I'm going to act, I'm actually going to go down the Havel route, but I wanted to make sure that I cleared this fog gate, just in case I want to come back through this area. Uh, because you can't, unlike in uh, Dark Souls 2, you can't actually go backwards through the gates. If you don't clear them from the area that they expect you to clear them, then they just remain there and you can't go through them. But yeah, Havel did really dislike the, the dragons. Oh. 
Oh, I guess just defeating him did that. Now, Silar is down here, but I'm not going to speak to him just yet. I'm going to save that for a little bit later, because that's going to be a whole thing in and of itself. Uh, but yeah, Hevel disliked the dragons. It's not clear why exactly he hated the dragons. And for that matter, it's not clear why the gods themselves hated the dragons. The gods are the ones that actually eliminated them. Humans didn't have any part in it. Humans actually, as a race, did not exist just yet. They, in fact, uh, didn't really come into their own, in, seemingly, until after the, uh, the gods had dealt with the dragons. Because, uh, it's basically said outright that Manus, or, well, the, the furtive pygmy, I'll say that, um, was biding his time and waiting for the Age of Fire to subside so that humanity could come into their own, which is now. And, uh, I can only assume that the reason why that the gods actually attacked the dragons is probably for one or two reasons. I don't know. It's It could be that they were simply using the gods as a scapegoat, as a way to propel their own society further upwards. Or it could just be that they lusted for power. The gods themselves seem to have a problem with power. Most of the gods that we do meet do seem to be concerned with power and keeping up appearances and seeming to be very royal and in control and so on. Even Gwen himself sacrificed himself to maintain the Age of Fire, which should have ended a long time ago. Which you could say that maybe it's because he was trying to preserve civilization, but you could also say that it's because he feared the coming Age of Man. And he didn't want the age that they had won to be handed over to filthy old humans. One thing I do find sort of unusual is the fact that... I'm thinking about the guy coming up here in a bit. Is that uh, we see during the cutscene that they actually have... There's our buddy. That they actually have armor and weapons and so forth. So obviously they already had an industry, which is pretty weird considering that there's nothing really under the earth. Okay. Now this guy, I've, it's been a while since I've practiced... I better heal, actually, just to make sure. No. It's been quite a while since I've practiced against this guy. The, the Hellbirds are a little bit more difficult to deal with. And I'm not doing getting any of the, the backstab. I'm still having problems with my alignment. It's less forgiving than it is in 2. I think I'm going to stop trying to do that, actually. <laughs> Maybe I'll just go for the, the, the parry. A little bit easier that way. Okay, let's see if I can... Now, halberds are very difficult to parry in some ways. See, the, the window on that was actually okay for the most part. But still didn't quite get it. That's not a realistic move, by the way. This The way that he's spinning around in circles, that's completely ridiculous. That is not how you use a halberd. Damn it. Tell you what. Go two hands. Maybe I can roll. No. That is not the way to go. That, in fact, is the inappropriate way to go. Well, you deserve that win, my friend. Yeah, I'm not very good at fighting that particular guy. Anytime that I have to use a halberd, it's going to be a bad time for me. Oh, well. It gives me the chance to show off my awesome skills of farming this area. Got pretty efficient at doing this. That guy's going. This guy always aggro's. Maybe not so efficient. Yes, yes, yes. Go away. Okay. Uh, but as far as the, the dragons and the gods go, it's not clear exactly why they attack them. It could just be that Gwyn and the sort of upper level gods had used the. Oh, follow me had used the, the dragons as a, scapegoat, as a way for escalating their own society, for establishing industry, for establishing their own culture, and for propelling themselves upwards past the, uh, the arch trees and into the world that we see here, as I explained earlier. It's going to be a long episode of me just doing jack shit. And unfortunately, since this is Dark Souls, I actually have to pay attention to what I'm doing half the time. Unlike Dark Souls 2, which I can kind of just breeze through and have no problems with it whatsoever. Uh, let's see. 
So do you guys... The... Really, it's less... To me, I've kind of interpreted the, that story, that aspect of the story, as being more just allegory. Because the, the whole gist... Get out of the way. Come on. Because the whole gist of the story in the first place is that it's mainly just an allegory for uh, mankind as a whole. That is our rise out of nothing, the abyss, into history itself, establishing ourselves as a culture and so on. In that respect, you could one could see the gods as being allegorical or metaphorical, whatever you want to say, to uh, the super wealthy or the elite of society, whereas the humans, the ones with dark souls, might be considered to be those that are less heroic, less illustrious, less elevated within society. To be the normal people, the dis average mundane human beings. But again, this just one interpretation. <clears throat> but Miyazaki in general does like the ideas that of heroes that have some element of darkness. He enjoys elevating uh, characters beyond the realm of mere humanity and treating them like you know superstars, treating them like heroes and gods and legends and things like that, which is sort of in in a way not to completely trivialize a uh, society, but it is sort of a very Japanese mentality. Uh, less so for Americans, which treat everyone as individuals, everyone as being equal. Uh, the concept of people being elevated beyond the status of mere normals is something that is still kind of present within Asian societies. Now, let's see. How am I going to treat this? Again, I'm no good at fighting these guys. have plenty of battle axes to choose from, thankfully. Now, I can just kind of cheese him out. What I can do... No. What I can do is just step my way right back in here. And he can't come inside this little cave. So I could just kind of just fuck with him. Actually, what I'm going to do is... Like this. So that I have some place I can spawn more easily. Well, this is something I should have done in the first place. If I had any fucking sense. Which I don't. But that's okay, that's okay. But Miyazaki really does like that concept. You will find... It, that This person, especially in Demon Souls, which I'll talk about in a second, as I get my ass kicked once again by my good friend. Good friend. And now you notice I'm doing, like, no damage to him whatsoever. And I'm going to have the same exact problem fighting him that I had fighting, uh... The, the guy earlier. That was strange. Now, I could just... I wonder if I can... No, I can't just quite kick him. I don't think I actually can do that. The uh, alignment for his hitbox, or however they work this exactly, is more over towards the... I uh, wonder if I can... Nah, I'm not going to chance it. You'll notice it's a little bit more over towards his uh, right-hand side. Whoa. Little recovery time on his attack. I was going to see... Damn it. I was never good at that. <laughs> That's something I actually would love to see removed from the game. Or the, the series. Which I know would just make people absolutely furious. Style points! Get up. Ah, damn it. Didn't get anything really from him. This is a very important shield for some people. Grass Crush Shield. Go ahead and mention that. Grass Crush Shield. Uh, old medium metal shield of unknown origin. It's kind of lazy. The Grass Crest is lightly imbued with magic, which slightly speeds stamina recovery. Okay, let's use this for a little bit. And you'll notice, of course, if I deplete all my stamina, it goes up pretty damn fast now. It goes up pretty damn fast now. Uh, I'll go ahead and show this off down this direction. And I'll also sit down at this bonfire to illustrate that whenever we go back through that area that the Black Knight is gonna, not going to be there. And go down here, pull the lever. But like I was saying, Miyazaki really likes that idea. Um, in Demon Souls, that's especially prevalent with the whole miracles versus sorcery sort of thing. Uh, in that 
in that story, within the context of that story, there is sort of the church who deal with miracles, and then there are people that are outside of the church who deal with sorcery, whenever it comes to magic, anyways. And miracles are considered to be good, and sorceries are considered to be bad. And you'll notice again that these are the same statues that we saw earlier in uh, under New Londo. Someone mentioned that possibly these could be alluding to the women that are down there, the ghosts. This is not really the case, considering that we see them here. Although this, of course, is just the same exact model, so of course they're going to be here. And, um, by the way, also the the mother-daughter thing that we I, I discussed earlier is also not quite a reference to that, as there is only one ghost in Lulando that actually has that model, and so on. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. Now, into the danger zone. Actually, I should have leveled up before I attempted this. But I'm going to try to go for that red tear stone ring. Yeah, actually, hmm, would it be better with a battle axe, or... I really hate that opening attack. Now, do you notice that they don't have a lot of poise? So it's actually fairly easy to get them to stagger like that. Which is why I'm using the battle axe. Oop, nope, nope, nope. And which is why, even... <laughs> You notice they have a shit ton of health. I'm not going to spend all day trying to do this. A little bit too dangerous at this point. Well, you see how far he chains out. Uh, but, yeah, uh, within the context of Demon Souls, that's the whole concept. That uh, miracles were bad, and uh, sorcer or sorry, mir <laughs> miracles were good and sorcery is bad. Now I'm going to definitely die on this fucking bridge. Some people do this flawlessly. I have never been particularly good at it. And you'll notice, brigand armor. This is the shit that I've been wearing. Oh, goddamn. Get up this little thing and we'll be okay if I don't get stunlocked. Okay. God. Look at that shit. Now, if I have a homeward bone, then I'm going to be fine. Otherwise, it's going to be fun trying to get back down here. Let's pluck the red tear stone ring off our, our good... Good friend, our good naked friend here. What you got going down here, buddy? Just looking up your... Yeah, just nebulous black region. Yeah, that's okay. I got that too. I got that too. What did I just pick up? <laughs> the, the ring. Sorry. Okay, the rare... Uh, the guys on kind of belly, blah, blah, blah. This red tear stone from Kareem boosts the attack of its wearer when in danger. And this one is from Katarina. This one is from Kareem. So obviously two different nations. So just pointing out the tear stone technology, as it were comes from two completely different areas. Now, do I have homework? Yes, I do. And I never use these, so I feel just fine about using them now. But the thought that I've been trying to get out this whole time, miracles and sorceries, within the context of Dark Souls itself, the concept of miracles and sorceries has been reused, obviously. Uh, might as well level up. I really, by the way, I really like leveling up at fires rather than having to go and speak to someone. I know people that play demons especially are really enamored with the idea of having callbacks to the, the maiden, but personally I prefer this system. Although I see exactly why it is that they wanted to have the system that they did in uh, Dark 2 demons. <laughs> well, all the ones except for this one. And you notice our friend is now gone. But within the context of this game, the concept of miracles and sorceries doesn't quite make as much sense as it did in Demons. Within Demons, within the context of that narrative, the whole concept was that they're actually the same thing. Uh, miracles and sorceries are actually... they come from the same source. They come from the, uh, the, the elder god of that world, the old one. And in this game, they just ended up reusing the, the same thing, saying, well, there's miracles and then there's sorceries. And what exactly is a miracle and a sorcery? In demons, a miracle and a sorcery, more loincloth men. Why are they always in their loincloths? Do they strip naked before they die? I hope I do. That's what I want to do whenever I die. Did I get three things? No. Press A again. I get more things. I don't know why it, it, it does it like that, but that's what it does. I don't think the leather shit has anything interesting going on as far as it's... Very common type of... Okay. Oh, that was worth the time. That was worth the fucking time. God, games. But in Dark Souls, miracles are kind of the same thing. They are... Abilities that are channeled through the power of the gods. Uh, which I think that we can actually... 
is that illustrated within, uh, blah, 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 where are they? I don't think I even have a talisman yet. Do I? Oh, I do. I do have a talisman. Okay. Let's see. Medium for casting miracles of the gods. Standard talisman used for two common believers. Equip talisman to cast miracles. Attuning miracles from a scroll and the of God's miracles. Okay, that didn't help at all. Didn't help at all. For God's sake. Ah, fuck you. I forgot about you, you little shit. Little shit ball. Gotta concentrate, kill these fucking things. God, I hate those. I really detest these things in all the games. I guess I'll complain about those later, especially whenever I see more of them, which we definitely will. And, uh, Sorceries and Dark Souls... I'll say it this way. Miracles come from the gods. Sorceries... are supposedly supposedly come from Seath. So they're, they were invented by the dragons, or primarily just by Seath. And, uh... Pyromancies were came from uh, the Witch of Isolith, which will become a little bit more confusing as we proceed further and gain more information on that. You naughty plant, trying to ambush me. The drop rate on these clumps is extremely high. God damn it! I told you I'm, never, I'm not good at that. So I have a reach? Yes, okay. If you feel like it's going out of your reach, you can always switch to that R2, especially if you've already stunlocked them. Since it's been a few days, I've actually been gotten kind of rusty with this thing. Now, since we're going in the back way, we have to be careful of... If you can hear that. And he's cheating! He is cheating. He can see me already. What a dick face. Actually, you'll notice he doesn't actually have a face. And I'm not going to get quite close enough for you to see this. But upon his face, you can see some small writing. Well, I can. Probably you can't. Due to these shitty... I, I really wish my internet was better. I could upload, upload better resolutions. Oh, well. But his, his head is actually a piece of demon titanite. You can see the writing very briefly. I'm not going to stick around. Because right now, he outclasses me by quite a bit. And I don't want to take the, the chance of having to deal with him. And this is actually just a little well, you must be a new arrival. I'm Andre of a store. Andre. If you require something, then speak to me. And of course, originally this was going to be the son of Gwyn, but they dropped that idea. That's the reason why he just looks like Gwyn. And of course, as I said earlier in part 2 or whatever the fuck it was... He also was going to be the one that would open up the way to the uh, the Lord Vessel room. Hurrah! Jester learned. Uh, let's try to get a bit more dialogue out of you. Most weapons and armor are mighty sturdy indeed. But every hunk of metal has its breaking point. If you notice your ability running low, it's time to repair. You can ask a blacksmith like myself, or do it on your own with a grindstone. The nice thing about weapons, they never betray you, so pay them a little respect, eh? Technically, they can betray you if they're in the hand of someone else. And also, you can kind of slip your hand and cut your hand because swords are fucking dangerous. Uh, da -da 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 -da. There is no, the repair system doesn't work like it does in Dark Souls 2. In Dark Souls 1, you actually have to physically go back and find a, uh, you actually have to repair them yourself. As well as yeah, I've used that a lot, god. 220. A little bit more dark. By the way, thank you so much for that gameplay narrative. Thank you so much for that. Oh, here's more, here's more. And there's a section. Reinforcement is simple. It strengthens the weapon and nothing more. A simple task for any blacksmith. Hell, you could even do it yourself with a Even a simpleton like me. When that loses its charm, you can consider ascension. As you've noticed, this land is flush with the mad and wicked. You won't make it through the night without employing my services. 
<laughs> Hilarious. By the way, it, that was really fucking boring what you just said. And also, you're not actually smithing that correctly. If you're hammering that out, it's implied that it needs to be at a, a heating point that is actually malleable. And you don't seem to have a furnace in here that I can see. Yeah, there's no furnace in here, so what the fuck are you doing? You're not doing anything, that's what you're doing. Okay, but what, what does he have for purchase? He has Titanite Shards, which you can you can make pretty good use of this early on to upgrade some weapons. Uh, and I'm eventually going to I'm going to do a little bit of off-screen farming to get this shit. And to get the Crest of Artorias. Can we? Yes, we can. Okay. The door leads... Actually, this, this crest opens the door in the Darkroot Garden sealed by ancient magic. The door leads to the grave of Sir Artorias the Abyss Walker. Many adventurers have left for the grave, but none have returned. For they make easy prey for local bandits. With such dangers, the crest can do more harm than good in the hands of the uninitiated. That is alluding to the Cat Covenant. And also, I will mention that Sir Artorias actually had a little bit more... Uh, presence in the story before they discovered we don't have time to do that, which is why he was relegated to the, the DLC, along with quite a bit of other things in the game. And he's got uh, kind of the standard stuff. Th a lot of things like like war picks, kind of useless. Kind of a problem with Dark Souls 1 is that a lot of things weren't really balanced that well. So a lot of things just aren't that great. The Bastard Sword, however, is actually pretty good. It's basically the same exact thing as a Claymore, which is widely considered to be one of the the best weapons in the game, in some respects. But the Bastard Sword has a little bit more damage, but it ha it's lacking one particular move. Which I guess I will show off later on. Because I definitely want to pick up the, uh, the Claymore. And the rest of that is just that. I'll worry about... Yeah, it's much to see you go hollow. I will worry about, uh... Upgrading my weapons much later on. I really want to get away from him because that constant banging really pisses me off. It actually gives me a, it, it usually ends up giving me a headache. I get headaches pretty damn easily for some reason. But let's take the opportunity to go up here. I wasn't going to talk to uh, blah, 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 uh, Solaire, but I definitely want to speak to him while I have the chance. One final thing, uh, I just wanted the, the book in what I was saying before, before I go any further, is that uh, miracles and sorceries and pyromancy, it's, it's kind of a mess in this game as far as the continuity of how they work, where they came from, and how they're related to one another. Just don't think about it too much. In Demon Souls, it makes perfect sense. In this game, it doesn't really make any sense at all if you start thinking about it, which I'll probably talk more about later. Okay, now to you. Hmm. 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 Oh, forgive me. I was absorbed in thought. I am Ziegmeier of Katarina. Quite honestly, I've run flat up against a wall. Or a gate, I should say. The thing just won't budge. No matter how long I wait. And oh, have I waited. So, here I sit, in quite a pickle, weighing my options, so to speak. <laughs> And of course, I'll go through the, the the standard and just say everyone loves him. Yes, Andrew, everyone loves Onion Bro. Still closed. Still closed. Mm. And already we see a problem with his character. He's not someone that can really solve problems on his own. He's actually a very capable fighter, but whenever he comes up against this gate, which he knows apparently, I don't know how he knows, but he knows that this is going to lead much later on to Anna Orlando. He doesn't know how to open it, and his solution is to just sit here and think. You ever know people like this, that their solution to problems is, oh, you can kind of see his eyes right there, that their solution to problems is not to start, is not to try, it's to plan. Eh, uh, let's see, what do I have? Was it a, no, that's right. God damn it, this game. Or, I should actually blame Dark Souls 2 for that. Okay. wonder if I can work my way. Now, you notice... You remember at the start of the game, whenever I was showing off all the little... ins and out of character creation? Katarina was the racist one. Now, he is from Katarina, but he is not a black guy. Uh, so, obviously, Katarina is not like a straight analog for, say, uh... 
you know, Africa or, you know, Australia or, you know, India or any place that you might consider to be uh, where people of, you know, like darker skin or something would hang out. Uh, this guy is very kind of European. I was kind of disappointed when I found that. I actually, I really wanted him to be, be like a cool black guy. Just to have some diversity. But it is Japan. It is Japan. Have anything else? Still closed. Still closed. Of course he doesn't. Mm. Because he doesn't try. And that's the problem with his character, which we're going to see a little bit more of as we progress with the game. He is not the kind to actually take initiative. Spends too much time planning, not, not enough time acting. Which is a problem with people that... Which is a problem in the art community. A lot of young artists spend too much time trying to plan all the things that they're going to do. And this is a problem with writers as well. Too many young writers spend too much time trying to plan out how they're going to write whenever they should just be writing. They don't start. They don't have the initiative. And I'll tell you right now, that is the difference between someone that, you know, someone that succeeds and someone that doesn't succeed. The person that succeeds is someone that tries and then fails. The person that doesn't succeed is, this, is the type of person that just doesn't try at all. Now, what exactly this place, what this actually does, I have no idea. I was kind of disappointed. I was hoping to see the message that the, I think it was the developers, or maybe it's just one that was on launch, but there was one that's floating in the air. You can actually get on top of this rubble pile too, by the way, which is pretty fun. Anyways, uh, I'm not going to go any further here, though. I'm going to stop here for now and leave it at that. So, next time we'll be tackling this area, and I'll be backtracking a little bit onto the Hellkite Bridge, I imagine. But for now, I'll leave it at that, and I will stop here, and I will not be opening up Game for Windows Live next time. Hopefully, by the time that I record this next part, which will probably be two years from now, uh, then we'll actually have the uh, Games for Windows Live service eradicated from history, and we will actually be going with full-on Steam services. Which I don't know if that's going to change the playthrough in any respect. But here's to hoping, blah, 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 blah. Alright. Here next time. See you guys later. Now back to drawing this stupid-ass cartoon. Mm -hmm.